Hi Greedy 3Ders, welcome to part two of the Batman Kissing Catwoman series of videos. Today I'm going to show you a little bit of prep and then we're going to paint them up. Absolutely fantastic model, really, really love the end result. So make sure you stay tuned until the end. Um, if you want to get this model, there'll be a link in the description where you can buy it from. If you want to buy some paints, you can get them from the description. Um, we've got a Patreon. Don't forget, check it out. It's all in the description. Please join the Patreon. It'd be great to have you guys on board. And if you want to buy one of these, I'll tell you in the description as well where you can get one for. But stay tuned. Let's go for step two, video two of the making of and the painting of Batman. Okay, there's the base printed in four pieces, printed on my Anycubic Viper in uh, PLA. It's gone together really, really well. Quite pleased with that. Got to do a little bit of uh, filling of the seams, which again, is no real drama and uh, looking nice. Need to clean some of the edges up as well. Get some of that PLA out of those edges. Um, as you all know, printing with PLA, it's a little bit of a nightmare with the supports. Uh, and that was using tree supports and they usually come off fairly easily. But hey ho, it's done, it's ready to go and it's ready to be done for the next stage. So it's really important to prepare your models for painting. And if we look at these models, you will see there's a little uh, divot here and a little divot there where the supports have come off. Now, if you've lined them up properly, which I've tried to do with these models so that, you know, look at the end result of where they're going to be sitting and try to keep supports off the areas that are visible. You can get away with some of this, but you do need to go through them all and just make sure that you're sanding off or using a little file, a little nail file or a bit of sandpaper just to get those divots off so that your end result, your painting at the end is uh, is not spoilt. And once you've done that and everything is filed, just do a quick test fit, which you can see me doing here. I'm just putting Batman, his belt and his body together just to make sure they all fit together snugly and they do. The head is exactly the same and everything is fitting where it needs to. And that again is really important. You don't want to be finding out at the end when you're putting things together that uh, they don't fit after you've done all that painting on them and next we're moving on to air brushing and to uh, give them a primer which is going to also be his main coat it's just some black primer from the army painter we get away with the painting with this one quite nicely really in that batman is quite a matte color in places so i'm going to give him that that primer all over and this will do two things it will prime the model obviously and it will also give me my, my final layer of the color for batman not so for catwoman she's a little bit shinier but batman this one is nice and easy and is really quick and Pat, batman is virtually painted all up here he is on display a little bit of styrofoam and some crocodile clips is all you need to dry your model now for Catwoman I'm going to use some of this paint this is matte paint but it actually comes out quite shiny and it's got a really good leather effect and I used it on the red school previously and I was really pleased with how it came out so this is what I decided to use on Catwoman and it's just a rattle can I got it from Amazon the links will be in the description if you want to get one of these uh, paints and I'm just spraying everything over and I'm moving on now to this demonic yellow for Batman's belt the good thing with him being in bits and pieces is you can do the belt separately and not want to get any of your black on the uh, yellow or any yellow on the black and once that's done I'm going back to the rattle can just to change the colour of Batman a little and I'm giving him that kind of shiny look. Now to fill the gaps in the base I'm just using some wood filler here and I'm just smearing it on with my finger. It won't get rid of the gaps completely but I'm going to come back to those at the end and add some snow effects on them but I just want to get rid of the most of the gaps that you'll see in the model there and wood filler is a great tool for that. Just pop it on and smear it in with your finger. Now on this model because it's such a defined uh, model and there's lots of shape and definition to it I don't really need to sand it down because I'm just going to rub it flat with my finger if you were doing it on an area that's flat you would need to sand it and now to paint it up I'm going to use one of these uh, ruins and cliffs primers which I got from one of the games master sets and that's just a lovely dark sort of grey brown colour which is really really lovely for a base colour And once that's on, I'm going to take the parts that I also printed for the balustrade rails there. Just do a quick test fit. And when I'm happy that they've 
all gone together really, really well. I'm going to apply some glue and use some uh, accelerator to stick it all in. As you can see me doing there, just holding it down nice and flat and spraying the accelerator on to glue it all in. And I'm going to paint it up. I want a marble effect on it. Now to use the marble effect, I'm going to use this first. This is the charred bone to give it its first layer. And this is a really good base layer. You want to like a brownie layer to start with, with marble. Um, I haven't undercoated it. I'm using this as the undercoat and I'm going to take it up a notch to some bleach bone and go over the top of it with bleached bone and that's pretty much it uh, same for the model in the center I'll do a little bit more work at the end by just giving it some snow effects but I'm quite happy with that and back to the base matte white just to put some white down to where the snow's going I am not just going to leave it as this there'll be more effects going on for the snow a little later on and of course giving the old model that sits there in the middle of the statue exactly the same treatment, a little bit of white across the top of him to make it look like he's been out in the snow. Now back to Batman and on to the painting stage and I'm using Barbarian Flesh here and all I'm going to do with the flesh tones, I'm going to give the each him and Catwoman about four to five layers of a basic flesh tone. There's not too much on Batman really which is pretty good, I'm not going to touch his eyes with flesh because obviously he wears some makeup uh, uh, in the movies uh, anyway and uh, I'm going to give it a layer of this pink across his face. So get that on there nice and smoothly. Try to get rid of any lines by using your brush strokes really wide. And a nice big brush does that for me really so I don't get any fine marks. Same again on Catwoman. Um, I'm using a smaller brush because there's a little bit more detail on here. But once I've gone around the edges, I'll go back to a bigger brush and I smooth all those lines away. And there we go, that's what she looks like after the first coat. As you can see, it's patchy, it's gonna be, don't worry. Layer two on Batman, and uh, you'll start to see the more layers of basic flesh paint that you put on, the better it will stick, and you'll start to cover more and more of the darker areas. You will not do this in one coat, you will need to do it in more than, uh, two, probably two or three coats to be fair. And that's what Batman looks like in two coats. You can start to see the patchiness is going away. Another two or three coats to go on there. Coat two on Catwoman, and uh, again, you can see that we're getting rid of some of the darker areas, but it's certainly not gonna be the last resort. And there she is with two layers, and there he is again now, just after two layers, and another couple are going on there. Once I'm happy that the skin is where I need it to be, I'm taking some of this white, and with Batman, I'm just gonna go into the whites of his eyes with that. Now, his eyes are really, really white, Michael Keaton's in the pictures, so I'm quite happy to leave that background like that normally I'd have a bit of blue or a bit of grey but in Catwoman because her eyes are pink um, with the skin tone I'm going to put the black in first to give her some eyeliner so that will go into the center of her eyes I'm then going to move on to some pure red and I'm going to put her lipstick on going around the tongue that's sticking out and there you can see her with her black eyes and her tongue and her uh, lips I haven't done anything with the tongue yet we'll come back to that and now you can see why I did that. So the whites in her eyes now have given her a black outline. And there's Batman. And what I've done with him is I've put a red layer at the bottom and I've put his irises in also. And with Catwoman, you can just see a red line at the bottom of her eyes. The blue's going in now for his nice bright blue eyes, followed by two drops in there, two spots for his pupils. And Batman's eyes are done. His lips, I've just given it a little bit of a shade of pinky red, and uh, I'm quite happy with how Batman has turned out. Catwoman, I've given her tongue a pink. I've done her eyebrows, done her eyes. As you can see there, just some black in her eyes, some blue her irises, and the, drop, the, the dots for the pupils, and she's done. The only thing left now is a little bit of gloss varnish into hers and Batman's eyes and around the mouth of Catwoman as well. Now using some soft pastels or chalks, I'm just gonna scrape a little bit off with a knife and I'm gonna take a really, really dry brush and I'm just gonna dab some of this chalk onto the brush and I'm gonna use it to give Batman a five o'clock shadow, literally just popping it onto his face around the areas of where your beard would be normally. Just literally pop it on and it will stain, it will mark the pink. Don't overdo it, just give him a little bit of a mark on him and that's what he looks like. And Batman now is absolutely complete and he looks he's looking really nice isn't he 
Now to do the stitching on Catwoman, which is quite intricate and there's an awful lot of it, I'm using one of these. This is an acrylic painter pen and it's really good for getting into uh, narrower areas. You can do the webbing on Spider-Man in black or you can do this in white. Link in the description to where you can get them. Now just to finish off his uniform, just to give it a little bit of a shimmy, I'm using some gunmetal on a dry brush and I'm just going to brush him right the way across. I just want to give him a little bit of reflection and a little bit of the essence of light bouncing off his uniform. Uh, I'm not going to overdo it and I'm not worrying too much about the back because he's going to be lying on his back and you're not going to actually see that. But once you've got a good layer on, there you go. You can see it's not dramatic, no real change, but you can see there's a little bit of highlight and a bit of brightness to it. Now, going back to the base and using a wash, this is a flesh wash from Army Painter. I'm just going to go over all the parts that would be that kind of concretey look just to uh, give them a little bit of aged effect. Uh, again, to the model in the centre, he's going to get exactly the same treatment and I'm just going to paint that all across there. And now back to the snow and I'm using this, the Army Field Basing Set. And this comes with a few components, one of them being this PVA glue, which I'm just going to use to smear all across the areas where I want the actual snow to sit. It comes with some grass effects, it comes with some little grassy knolls, but it also comes with some really lovely snow. So once you've got your PVA all over the places you want it, and don't forget the top as well because that's where the snow is going to hit. I'm going to grab my little bag of white magic snow and uh, sprinkle it on to the areas I want it. Now again those areas where the join was and I said I was going to reinforce them a little bit. Well you can see that that's exactly what I've done with the snow around the base. I'm not too bothered about the joins in the actual concrete because that's fine. I'm not too worried about the, uh, the balustrades etc. But I want the uh, joins on the ground to go away because that's going to be a focal point. And um, there we go, snow sprinkled on. When you've done this, you're going to need to take it somewhere nice and tidy and blow it all off or just tip it back into a tray and put it back into the bag and you can use it again. Mm -hmm. 